of text of said warrants appendices. It should say, it's an and certification of text of said warrants appendices. Please and thank you. Okay, that's it. I make a motion. with approve it. The only other issue was the EC meeting. Yes, I'll, I'll strike that when we get to that item. Or we can strike it now. Um, 5A, EDC will not meet tomorrow. Uh, won't meet this week at all, but it said Tuesday. It should have said Wednesday. Okay, so we can, you can strike, strike A. That. A. funds, and uh, certainly uh, I think it has a very good chance of passing. Uh, I would certainly hope so. <laughs> yeah. Secondly, uh, the school budget, which is question, question one, uh, for $39 million, uh, I believe is a very sound budget. I'm both Tom and I have been on the budget committee and, and uh, worked on it for the last several months. Uh, it reflects a slightly less than 1% increase for Arundel taxpayers and similar amounts for the other two towns, a little bit more for the port. And finally, uh, a recent decision on hiring uh, an interim Superintendent, um, I want to thank you for putting me on the selection committee in the first place on these, um, not, not the board of course, but uh, one, one of the two teams that also did final interviews. Um, it was, a, in my opinion, a very good decision uh, not to uh, hire any of the candidates that were uh, presented. And uh, the intent then is to go back out in six months or so and uh, start the process again. But in the meantime, we'll lose a good principal, but uh, I'm sure we'll have a, a fine replacement as well. So things are going well. Do we all know that Kevin Crowley has taken the position of the, he's going to be interim superintendent of schools for a year, Dr. Yes. Crowley, from here? Yeah. Is there any discussion as to who's going to interim him? As, as to what? Who's taking Crowley's spot for the... Uh, it will be an interim selection. Mm -hmm. uh, at least that's what I've written the paper. And... Uh, it's really up to the superintendent to choose the people that work for him. Uh, the only hire that the board does is the superintendent alone. And then the superintendent hires everybody under that. Uh, no indication from my standpoint so far. But I'm not in the loop, so that's the superintendent surprising. has to get the board's approval vote, doesn't he? 
Pardon? The superintendent has to get the board's approval, though, doesn't he? Oh, yes. Yeah. But, but uh, typically, that's just a formality. And uh, they, uh, I, don't, I don't recall anybody not having been approved. Thank you, Jack. Thank you. Okay. Anyone, anyone else got any? Okay. Minutes. I think we just got those, huh? Yes, we did. <laughs> then we'll pass on those to go to the top there to review them and take them up at the next meeting. You're going to fix any of the other ones? No, we'll add them a little bit. Okay, so committee board reports. Uh, the EDC meeting will not be held on Wednesday evening. Um, I did not get an agenda put together and I didn't want to waste the member's time by having them there uh, at a pointless meeting. So I cc you on all that correspondence so you're aware of what's going on with that situation. Uh, Town of Arundel and RSU 21 referendum elections Tuesday the 10th of June from 8 a.m. until 8 p.m. at the Arundel Fire Station. That will also be the primary elections as well. Open Town Meeting is Wednesday, um, June 11th, 2014 at 7 p.m. in the ML Day School Gymnasium. A reminder that at 6 p.m. we'll hold a public hearing in regards to the uh, Arundel Seasonal Cottages TIF. And the Planning Board will meet Thursday, June 12th, 2014 at 7 p.m. here in the library. Welcome you boys, would you like to give, an, <laughs> would you like to give a report on the Planning Board meeting we attended? Mm -hmm. Uh, you know what, I didn't take minutes, okay. but I, 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 we can talk a little bit about it. I mean, Tom was there, Bill was there, the only ones that went there was Jason and Tom, but they had the um, a public hearing on the ordinance revisions for the, you know, the, the DB1, DB2, and um, the Town of Corn District, and um, I guess it's safe to say there was a lot of negativity in the audience, and push comes to shove or at the very end the planning board decided that it wasn't ready to submit that for a vote. So they got to go back to the drawing board, make some changes and uh, go back at it. That's pretty much what the whole gist of the meeting was. By the time uh, we got done, order after 11, something like that, I think is what it was, they, they skipped the planner's report and they just adjourned the meeting. So that's pretty much what it was all about. Want to add anything, but well, I think one of the things we ought to talk about is, is the planning board did a, a lot of work, obviously. Oh, absolutely. And there were negative comments, but they were confined to certain areas. And I hope that they're not going to go back and revisit everything that they didn't hear negative comments about. Go back and look at those things that they did and confine yourself to that. Otherwise, going back to the drawing board is going to have another year out. Um, that's going to upset more people probably. <laughs> and I think, you know, maybe gathering from the what was thrown out from the audience, maybe that would be a good starting point to educate the folks because there was, there was some negativity there, but some of it really, I, I think, is because they really didn't understand what was going on. So it might be a good, a good tool to re-educate the folks and have, you know, some more public hearings and, you know, get a whole bunch more folks involved. Some of the comments were about existing ordinance positions. Yeah. yeah, yeah, but that's all right. I mean, we've had an opportunity to fix those still. I mean, some of them were legitimate concerns. Oh, there was the definitely board. a lot of legitimate yeah. stuff, but yeah. there's also some real good stuff, and mm -hmm. none of that was really brought to the forefront. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Good point, John. And the other discussion I think was that um, should the seasonal cottage tip be favorably acted upon by the town. I think we have to early on take up the amendment to the ordinance just by itself of the so, uh, definition of change the definition. So we can get that out of the way. I mean, that's just... That was a misdefinition and right. everything else was in line. Right. It could have happened, but after the definition was discovered, mm -hmm. we yeah. couldn't move forward mm -hmm. with it. So that, I do believe, the planning board, <clears throat> the few members I've spoken to since the meeting said that they're ready to you know, get it, get it going. Try to bring this to a special town meeting. Try to keep the interest of the people who came out to the public hearing, and you know, take that input into consideration. One thing I wish I had stayed a little longer for. I think I left around 9:30. Was there was a lot of criticism as to how much detail was in that in those districts, 
And my response to that is the planning board takes a lot of heat here in Arundel for decisions that are made or lack of decisions being made. And I think that's the only way to take that response, not responsibility, but to take that objectiveness away from the planning board to be able to have something to point to to save people's steps. And I think that's something that I missed out on by leaving what I did. Uh, but I think we can make that point very well heard. Um, there's a conflict between what the perception is with the residents as to what the perception is from business owners. And I think somehow there has to be a happy medium so that everybody can, in order to get a pass, period. Um, you know, some people would like to see Route 1 Saugus out there on Route 1 in Arundel, and some people would like to see Old Sturbridge Village, and we need to find a balance, you know, if we're looking to be responsible to the rural character that everybody keeps talking about, we can't have just form-fit steel buildings and concrete block buildings on Route 1, and that I don't think is well received by the business community, but that's why it's a decision of the entire legislative body of the town. The, the thing with the detail, the level of details that people don't understand is it's it's there to protect each and every business, it's there to protect the neighbors, it's there to protect everybody, you know, because if, if you've got yourself a real nice spot, a real nice building, and somebody comes in next to you and puts up a crappy looking steel building, well, you know, you're, what's your evaluation, your value of your property going to look like? So it's there to protect everybody and... And people just, they don't understand that, they don't realize that, and I, I think, you know, the planning board is going to have to work hard at getting that point out, because I heard, as it was going on, I heard comments in, in the back, you know, I could hear people saying, oh, you know, we, we can't have all these regulations. Well, in today's day and age, you have to, you know, just because you don't have these regulations, you're going to you're gonna upset a neighbor, you're going to upset whatever. Way it is. It's just funny, I mean, this, this, this is a loosening of the regulations. Yeah. Just, yeah, I am. <laughs> but it's spelled out a little better. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm just going to. I know, then. Okay. Uh, I won't get into the <laughs> treatment. Okay, under new business, review the final Arundel um, Seasonal Cottage TIF application, district application. Um, this application has been reviewed by Shauna. Um, I am going to read to you an email I received from Joe Polini today. Um, I'm waiting for a little bit more um, legal document from him, but this is what he sent me today. Good day, Todd. This is to confirm that Arundel Cottage Preserve LLC will pay the legal fees associated with the town of Arundel's attorney's efforts regarding the review of the TIF filing documents, etc. Please submit, email the invoices from Shanna Cook Mueller, Bernstein Sher, to me for payment. And he CC'd his investors on this. So I got secured that. That was due to a, con a perfectly timed conversation I had with Diane Robbins. I decided to capitalize on that conversation and bring it to Joe's attention and tell him if you're willing to, you know, if you're willing to jeopardize all the work you've done and you really need this tip, then you need to listen to this conversation that I had. And he was very uh, he wavered, um, and when he finally was able to pass that conversation on to his investors, they understood exactly what was going on and agreed to pay for these uh, legal fees. So that, that's a helpful thing. Um, <clears throat> Shanna, Shanna asked me to pass on to the Board of Selectmen that it's important that if you're in favor of it, speak in favor of it, speak favorably of the project. Uh, you don't have to be the marketing guru, you don't have to be the uh, town crier to go talk about it, but if like she said, if the Board of Selectmen are on board and the Board of Selectmen are not, are, are not certain of the project, it's bound to fail from, day, from the minute we get into the building. Uh, so she just, she just asked me to pass that on to you. Um, I know that you're aware of that, but I just wanted to reiterate the fact that if this is to pass, the Board of Selectmen has to be on board. Um, the, the document you see in front of you is what Shanna has reviewed. Um, there is some information that has been taken out. I will get to that in a moment. Right now, I thought I had marked the section, um, and apparently I did not. But in here, there's a reference to, uh, in, oh, right here. Uh, page 5 of the document is one of the major issues that was discussed through many of the meetings. Um, and on page 5, Article 3, about halfway down Article 3, it says, pursuant to a specific provision within the credit enhancement agreement, the specifics of which will be negotiated by the town's board of selectmen, notwithstanding the description of allocations of TIF revenues above, 
if within a certain period of time, in parentheses, approximately five years, the developer's project has not produced a substantial amount of increased assessed value, the credit enhancement agreement will terminate automatically. So what that says is within approximately five years, if they haven't been on schedule as they've been indicating to us, this TIF will automatically dissolve. Uh, the credit enhancement agreement portion of the TIF will dissolve. Um, the town will still be able to use for economic development any revenues that we brought into the captured revenue account for the town, um, but the monies that go back to the developer will no longer go back to the developer. Approximately? Um, that it's going to be, it's going to be more, the only legal document is the credit enhancement agreement is what Shanna tells me, um, and that will be specified in that credit enhancement agreement. This is just to get the average voter to understand they've given the authority to the Board of Selectmen to negotiate that credit enhancement agreement and this, she wanted to spell it out briefly in the financial plan so that everybody's aware that there is that relief mechanism for the town. Um, if you flip to page... Are you going to still stick it on that same subject or are you going to something? No, nope, you go right ahead. Um, so it says the developer's project does not produce a substantial amount of increased assessed value. Yep. What is that substantial amount? I mean, who determines that? How is that determined? That is going to be determined in negotiation. With pro the Board of Selectmen has the authority to, to negotiate that credit enhancement agreement. So if this passes to move forward, the Selectmen and the developer, the Selectmen will come up with, work with Shanna to come up with what's acceptable in this TIF project. If the selectmen decide in two years it has to be X amount of units, or in two years it needs to be X amount of road frontage, or in two years it needs to be X amount of increased assessed value to move forward, we can set those parameters in that discussion. Uh, but I didn't think it was feasible to spend, at the time I didn't know Joe was paying for this, but at the time I also didn't think it was feasible to spend the six to $10,000 to negotiate the credit enhancement agreement if this was in fact going to fail at town meeting. Um, so in the event that this TIF development plan passes, we'll move forward and begin negotiating that credit enhancement agreement with the developer. So is that a, a credit enhancement agreement, is that a general public meeting or is that going to be an executive session type thing or? I'd have to check the statute. There may be, if we're discussing specific financial, it has to be proprietary because eventually the information, as I told Joe today, we're going to expect to see estimates ahead of time of what the investments are going to be into the district. As those investments are rolled out, that'll all be public document. So I'll have to check and see if we can do any of that in the executive session. I mean, it's a negotiation, so there's a possibility where there's a contract involved. I'd like to verify that before I say yes or no. I can envision there might be some executive sessions among us mm -hmm. to discuss the terms of uh, the proposed mm -hmm. enhancement agreement, either they're proposing or right. what we think. I mean, we, we want to discuss that in private. We certainly might have a right to do that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Whether our discussions with them um, could be an executive session, I think we're going to fall into the same problem we did with the last time. They're going to have to make some decisions on what they want to disclose and not. And ultimately, the credit enhancement is going to be a public project. So by the time we get to that, and that point, I think, well, I know everything will be public. Huh? Well, any any follow up to that, Dan? No, I think. Another thing I wanted to bring to your attention: same page, page five, is referenced several times in here. But the original assessed value of the district is seven hundred and twenty-one thousand four hundred and seventy-two dollars. The original. Uh, figure that we had discussed was $400,000. Um, the assumption was that all of these properties were going to be joined into uh, a single ownership and a single parcel. At this point in time, as of April 1st, that has not happened. Um, and so in order to reach that lower original assessed value, we would have need to have combined all of the lots because of the way the assessing is done. It, it works on a first acre and then remainder of the land basis and where there are so many different parcels and different ownership that haven't been joined yet, that's what the original assessed value was as of April 1st. So that, that increased a little bit. Um, it's not a major impact on the project. The, uh, 
we had a conference call with all of the all of the individuals in the uh, developers team, as well as the attorney, myself, Pat, and Beth. Uh, and I think we all came to an agreement that the way it is set up um, is in the best interest of the town. Uh, they were asking for more land on Route One. We don't have the ability to tax any of that land on Route One, so we declined to add that into the TIF district, as well as they wanted the entirety of, uh, of a parcel that only has a portion being considered. Um, and that, that was how it worked through the entirety of the discussion until Rick Cheney, who is Joe's attorney, came into the mix. His concern was 15 years from now, if they decide to expand this project and develop further, that they may need that land in a TIF district. Um, our rebuttal to that was that we don't want to tie that land up, land up on potential use. Uh, we've already got 158 acres that are tied up. We only have 772 tiffable acres in the town of Arundel. So at such time as they decide to move forward with an expansion, they'll have to go to the planning board anyway. Um, and as that's occurring, I told Joe, I said, to be honest with you, I think once people see this up and running, people see this as making some progress, you'll have an easier chance of getting more land at, at such time as people realize that there's a benefit to the project. Um, but we couldn't justify um, adding another 72 acres, I believe it was, to what, taking out of our bank of typical land, and they were, at, they were fine with that. What land were they talking about? Um, it, it, there's a portion of the, it's owned by the Porter Land Trust. It's my understanding that Sean Houston owns that parcel. So it's on the back. And it's in tree growth. Yeah. So as of right now, they're not planning to take that land out of tree growth. And so that's how that conversation um, concluded was Joe agreed, okay, we're not planning to do anything in the immediate future. There's no need to tie that up. Must be over on the mountain, near the mountain. It's near the mountain road, yes. Is that the subdivision? Yep, absolutely. Hidden Meadows, I believe. Yeah. And it backs up to that land and, and the uh, unit's hill easement. Was, was he a member of the business property? I mean, the commercial property on the side, was that in the TIF? It is. It is, but the value of the property isn't in there yet. They didn't project that. That will be above and beyond. So whatever development they do in that parcel will add to the value of the um, captured additional value that we gain by the project coming to fruition. So with that piece of property, if a business comes in and they sell that piece of property to the business, what happens to the tax? That is something that will be discussed briefly in the credit enhancement agreement. That is up to the developer, typically. Uh, but in a situation like that, somebody who's going to purchase property like that, knowing that there's a TIF associated with it, would expect either a reduced rate or expect those TIF, TIF revenues to go back to down. Uh, but it, I believe uh, in everything that Joe said, he plans to retain ownership and possibly lease the property to some other operator. Is that a word? I, I, I've been using it. <laughs> I've been using it. I, don't, I can't imagine I'm the first one that has, but I, I'm going to have to call Webster. Yeah, maybe really. in the 12th collegiate. That will be good. Yeah, next year's edition. <laughs> We're cut above the best. Make our own words. Excuse me. You go to page 8. Um, the confusing numbers have disappeared. If you remember in the increased assessed value line, there was a total there of, of billions of dollars. Mm -hmm. um, so they've eliminated that in both the increased assessed value column and the captured assessed valuation column. Um, I said several times that that was confusing to people. They're going to think there's $10 billion here and there isn't. So they eliminated those. Um, and the biggest thing you'll notice, it, it, I'll call it the biggest thing, but they brought up something bigger because the um, uh, economic development didn't get to the front. Prioritize. <laughs> Prioritization, I was told, is not an issue with the state as we go through with these projects. Removed from the town portion development program has been the um, pressure reducing station for the Unitil gas line. Um, that did not fall within the parameters or the state statute of what a TIF district can contain in the future. If the unit's success hinges upon natural gas being provided on site, 
that could be added in. Uh, Joe was not interested at that point in time to discuss whether or not the units will need natural gas. Um, and unfortunately, it didn't fall within the Tier 1, Tier 2, or Tier 3 constraints that Shanna could possibly justify for the TIF. So what it was going to turn into was a prorated portion of a prorated portion of funds that would be available to be used on that pressure reduction station. And I felt that that was going to be too cumbersome and too confusing to explain at town meetings successfully. Um, and that we had other, plenty of other projects that are going to eat up the majority of what it is we're already trying to do. So in the future, if Unitil is willing to talk, which we haven't even been able to bridge that gap yet, in the future, if Unitil is interested in talking, then we can try to move forward with something like that. But in order for it to make it work, it would have had to been a municipal utility, um, and I wasn't even willing to enter that conversation at this point in time of starting a gas company for the town of Arundel. Um, I thought that was just pie, way too pie in the sky and we were never going to get anywhere with that. The other thing that's gone is the municipal business park. Um, that was also a pie in the sky idea. Um, just thinking in the future there was the possibility if we were to get that passed we would have had to identify the, the lot that is going to be purchased and it would have had to be in the TIF district so we have, would have had to tie up acreage since we don't know where there's an economic development parcel that's potentially for sale that the town would allow us to purchase, we took that out and in the future if there is interest by, by the town and the folks in town to start a business park, that can be added to this district or put into another one. So, so can I ask a question? Sure. Do we have to have a priority problem? <laughs> I'm going to ask, ask Shana that again. Item? I will ask Shana that again. Can we eliminate the priority problem? I'm just concerned that you know, people are going to think this TIF district is all about going after a sort of. Yeah, maybe some you know some people will probably like that, but some people will probably hate it. But that's really not the intent of this. But right now, anyway, right? So. Absolutely, I will yeah. ask her that. I'm going to consider that a non-substantive change to the text. Yeah. I wonder uh, if that word wasn't their priority. That, I mean, this I looks like yeah, we want that, and then we want sidewalks. Yeah. 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 I will see if we just eliminate the word priority. And possibly the numbering as well. Just shrink that column like that. Uh, that's the majority of the changes. The maps we've included here. Uh, they show up much better in color. They'll be on the website. Um, and it's, it's a lot more identifiable on, on that color version. I can't scan in color. Um, so unfortunately, you've got a black and white version of that. Um, and all of the other numbers have not changed or have changed minimally. If the Board of Selectmen are in favor of the changes as I've described, I ask that you sign the Municipal Officer's Certification of Official Text of a Proposed Ordinance for the Seasonal Cottages Municipal Development and Tax Increment Financing District. I'm slow on the uptake here, but okay. I don't understand how in the world we've got a captured New projected tax calculated there at 64, and we decided we we're going to split our side of it. We split with them 50 50. Yep, and, and then we're going to take 25 25, right? Nope, what's happening now is this is 75 percent captured. So if they get 67 and we get 33 in regards to that 75 percent, the additional 25 percent automatically goes into that. So that municipal non-captured general fund revenues, that last column yes. goes to the general fund revenues before any TIF is calculated. So okay. that's not the captured value. So don't, you're not adding those two, the, all three columns together? No, so because there's two. going to be that inherent $700,000 that's always going to be added. Okay. Yeah, so that's mm -hmm. why they don't work out perfectly. Yeah. Any other questions, clarifications, concerns? Uh, come on, here's the page about the jobs. Yes. There's a job retention goals. It says they're not retaining any of the jobs, but aren't they going to have uh, staff that are going to be on site? That they may contract that out to an outside firm. Okay. Um, they Once this is up and running, everything's going to get turned over to a uh, condominium association or an owner's association. 
typically in a situation like that, those jobs will be outsourced to a contracting company. Okay. Any other questions, folks? Uh, so, in signing, in signing the document that you want us to sign, does that one article? <laughs> uh, I'm concerned if she comes back and says that you can't make those changes to the priority, is that apparently that's an issue with the board or? Is I'm willing to explain that fact at town meeting if she doesn't allow us to do that, but that would be up to the board. Yeah, I don't know if I'm the only one that feels that way. So, uh, well, I mean, it gets, the my understanding has been that we get to pick and choose regardless of what the right. priority is. Yeah. Exactly. Absolutely. And we can we can amend and modify depending yeah, on Yeah, it's easy for us to say yeah. that, but at town meeting, when you know how would they well, see that? I mean, that's make sure the council yeah. yep. confirms that. I mean, and if, so I, I would like that. I'd like to have you sign this on the understanding that that prioritization might not be able to come out, but that I will explain it at the public hearing as well as when the uh, uh, item comes up at town meeting so that we can diffuse any of that conversation. All right. <laughs> Twist your arm. Okay. So we need a motion to sign the certification. Yes, please. Second. The name is second. Any further discussion? All in favor, then. There we go. Okay. So I have probably give me your, the final copy. I have a copy. I will give you the final, final copy. And that will be in the uh, minutes book and in a, with a warrant and attached to the original town meeting. Okay. Okay, now item 1A had to do with the public hearing? That's correct. To sign notice of public hearing to hold this public hearing at 6 o'clock on June 11th. Okay. Second. Any further discussion or any discussion? All in favor then. So be at 6 o'clock. Signed up, right, Jack? It'll be online. I check it. Yes. So I'm say selecting to sign the official 2014 town meeting warrant by posting the certification of text of said warrant and appendices. I'll just, if I may, Mr. Chair. Sure. Item six, Article six. You'll notice it's stricken through. And I put a clarifying sentence on, statement on there. This is due to the input received at the public hearing on May 22nd, 2014. Planning Board voted 6 to 1 to not include this item in the June town meeting warrant. Uh, the reason for that was after the third time we reviewed the changes we were going to make, Simmet brought to my attention that the warrant articles in the book and all of the financial articles that are in the spreadsheets reference these numbers that are in this warrant article. So the, the cleanest way to do it, if people are sitting there holding their report book, rather than have to hand out all new warrants at town meeting, we can still go by the report book and then just make this clarifying statement um, during Article 6. I'll have to bring it to Derwood's attention and he'll inform the public that that won't be voted on. Um, other than that, nothing has changed in the warrant that was presented, uh, except for certain dates. Mm -hmm. 
a motion then to approve the 2014 annual town meeting order. So moved. Okay. Motion is second. Case is second? Yeah. Okay. Any discussion? Anybody got any concerns? Yeah. All in favor then. All ten of them? Mm -hmm. No, I'll just, I'll just pass a couple. I, I can attest that there are two copies, so as long as I have. And Simone is going to pass around to you as well. Uh, there will be two other certifications of text. One is the E911 addressing ordinance, which we have gone over. Uh, the changes that have been made have been made prior to the last discussion we had on this. Uh, so we need to sign that. And then I didn't send you the comprehensive plan. I think you can probably see why you use enough paper and ink at home. Um, nothing has changed from your last review of this either and ask that you sign the appendix, uh, the certification that, uh, of that appendix as well. Second. All in favor. This is the I mean, uh, on the uh, amendments to the rental comp plan. Yes. We didn't. Uh, we didn't do a recommendation on that. There was no official recommendation made by the board. No. Mm -hmm. Make your position known to town meeting. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Welcome to review and sign a bill of sale for tax foreclosed property on 4 Katie Lane. Someone has that. Sales price was $5,010. I'll have the breakdown for you as to where those revenues are going to go. Um, there will be a portion that will go to taxes and arrears, a portion to legal, a portion to advertising, and the remainder will go into the municipal bill of reserve. Okay. Need a motion to that? I think we already did. You've already, 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 already yeah, yeah, approved the sale. Yeah. Awarded the data, I should say. For the record, I won't sign this because of an earlier state conflict. Perfect. Okay, now to review and consider approval of changes to the town of Arundel parking ordinance relative to the Eastern Trail to be voted on July, July, June 9th, 2014. Thank you, Tom. Thank you, Allison, for your help on this. As you can see, the language I missed in here added quite a bit to the uh, text of this ordinance. If you'd like, I can read it out loud. You can kind of get an idea of where it's headed. Um, if you wouldn't like me to do that, I will skip that portion. Um, but uh, looking at the maps, looking at the references, the deed reference, everything appears to be in order in this, uh, in this language. 
So if this is acceptable, we'll move forward and have a public hearing on this on June 9th. Um, I just need you to approve that you agree with what is in this language so that I can move this to be the official um, parking, parking ordinance in regards to the Eastern Trail. Uh, should the public hearing go favorably? favorably. If anybody's got any questions, I can kind of explain what I did. Yeah. Go ahead. Okay. <laughs> just using with the map that Paul provided for us. Um, of course, I just described it as being a strip of land that's 15 feet in width for its entire length. And then described it by reference to the sideline of the Limerick Road, the westerly side. So everything is easterly of, of that, for starting at a point 25 feet from the intersection of the, the Unitel gas line, or what, whatever the name of that. Unitel Granite State Gas Transmission and With the westerly side of the Limerick Road. So here's your line, and you pull 15 feet easterly of that for its entire distance, and all the parking needs to be parallel there. And I indicated that there ought to be signs, appropriate sign designating where you can park. And I did that because Paul seemed to show here there's like 20 feet of shoulder yeah. here, and I figured. 15 feet be enough to get off, off the road, it would not be right mm -hmm. right next to it, open your door, and a long kind of traffic, all those kinds of things. So that was the thought process. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 15 is probably all you will get, but if you do your soul. I would think, yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Okay, well, if you have gone over all these north, east, south, and west, and all of that mm -hmm. stuff, then. And uh, I make a motion that we approve this wording. Go to the public hearing. Second. Any further discussion? Questions? All in favor of sending public hearing? Okay. Okay, the next item deals with the transfer of reimbursable legal fees relative to the CMP utility tip from contingency account to professional service legal account in the amount of $1,525. The last of the legal fees, they actually came prior to the approval of the $5,672. I just wanted to make sure that all funds that are reimbursable have the vehicle to reimburse them to. So I ask for approval of that $1,525, which will reimburse the contingency uh, capital reserve account. Motion on that? So moved. Any second? A second. Any questions, folks? Um, what's in the, how much is in that contingency account today? Today, in that contingency account, there is. $20,515. And so this will, it'll be reimbursed, this fund will get put back in. Yeah, once we've captured value, that'll be reimbursed. And there's an additional right now about $4,500 remaining in the current year. Um, either way you work it, there was $10,000 this year, so at the end of this year there would have been $30,000. By removing this $7,000, that will be reimbursed to, to bring that back to where it should be. All in favor, then. So be it. Now, I request to transfer $4,311.50 from the Administrative Capital Equipment Reserve to the Town Hall Administrative Computer Slash Software Account to reimburse for a server replacement. Yes, the server was replaced in December. Um, and it wasn't anticipated, so though I'm asking to re replenish the Town Hall computer software line so that I can pop purchase items that were anticipated that I can't purchase uh, because we're running up against the end of the year and every department's had a pretty brutal beating this year. Um, so I'm asking for that $4,300. And $11.50 to, re to, to replenish that account so we can make purchases that were anticipated but have not been made. Motion on that then? I move the law. Second. Sorry. Any questions? 
So it was uh, the server itself was twenty nine hundred bucks. That's correct. And it cost them thirteen hundred also to do the work for to get everything synced and everything back in order. Yeah. Did they have to come here and do that? Or? They did. Okay. Any questions, folks? If not, all in favor? Okay. I'm sorry, not here at Town Hall. Yeah. And there ain't any punk stuff. Yeah, and now the town manager wants to also transfer. <laughs> Close to the end of the year, you know. <laughs> uh, what do you want to transfer now? Nine hundred eighty-six twenty-five from mis miscellaneous grant fund to public works tools and equipment expenses for reimbursement to purchase made purchases made relative to the safety grant award. Yes, yeah. um, this was done last year. Um, this is typical. Roger puts in for a safety grant with Maine Municipal Association. Typically, we receive the grant. This year, he did. Um, and in order, to, you have to make the purchases prior to receiving the grant award. So, in order to replenish Roger's account, I need permission from you to do that. So moved. Second. Motion remains second. Any questions? All in favor? Okay. okay next item is to point Doris Tasher with elect awarded for the June 10th, uh, 2014 state primary election pursuant to MRSA 20A, section 501-2. So moved. Second. Questions, comments? All in favor? Do we have to do this for every election? Mm -hmm. Every state yep. election? <laughs> state election. Yeah. It's yeah. just like every, like what, what happens is actually on election day, I swear her in as warden, and then we also have to open the town meeting, and we have to elect as moderator. So she usually is elected as warden and moderator, and then she fills out a form, um, a, you know, um, appointing uh, Dorothy Parkinson as deputy moderator to complete the annual town meeting, open but open meeting part of it. So, yeah. <laughs> A lot of can't have a, we can't have a motion to appoint Doris as election warden for life. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, the, the warden position is up until the close of that poll and then it's terminated. Okay, next item is to sign the uh, notice of public hearing in regards to the amendments to the Don Rondo parking ordinance. Oh, I think I might have mixed these up because these. Kind of old. There's nothing to sign as no. far as the proposed revisions. No, but for the. For the they signed. I'm public sorry, hearing. Yes. Oh, did you have them sign the. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> You've already signed this. Signed the folks. public hearing. <laughs> <laughs> this is just. Okay, unless anybody wants to renege. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess that would be also part of the item. Already done with the, uh, yeah, item D, D. Right. item D, they just verified that the text yeah. was okay. Oh, okay, I, I'm okay. sorry. And then sorry, sign it. Yes. So you just need a motion to, that you motion sign <laughs> for so the all, notice. Okay. Second. All in favor. Okay, consideration approval of the Economic Development Committee's request to hold a meeting. Uh, they, they want this request, even though they're not having the meeting, just in case for future. Okay. That is correct. Okay. Yeah. Uh, to hold meetings at Weir's Motor at 1513 Portland Road per requirements of the Town of Orlando approved meeting room policy, which we are supplied copies of and have. Okay. Yes. Notice, notice locations of the Town Hall, Mildred Day School, and the Orlando Central mm -hmm. Fire Station. Um, this is a requirement. Um, it, it will be publicized and notified as such if the board decides to allow this request. I move with Lowry. As I say, the only reason this had been adopted because some people are intimidated about going to meetings in other areas. Mm -hmm. um, they they consider, you know, the school, the fire station, public places. There's a, there's also always the implication that you know they might be intimidated about attending a public meeting. Um, I think this was adopted because we were having issues with the school board having workshop meetings, different camps or things like that and you know um, 
any of these committees have to realize that their meetings are open, so anyone who wants to attend can go. Yes, that's my There's concern, too. <laughs> they don't know that. So. <coughs> well, at the time, they were also having some meetings at private homes. Mm -hmm. And that, yeah. but yeah. that was... Uh, what was the reason yeah, against yeah, that? Why, why, why um, I, I, I was there for the discussion, but there was never any reason why. Uh, I, I don't know if they think it's you know nicer accommodations, or I don't know exactly what the underlying thought was. That's what I was going to say. I'm not going to I'm not going to try to influence the board one way or the other on this matter. This is strictly a request that was made by the EDC. We have accommodations here. Um, I don't know if it's because Weirs wants to show off the facility, or I don't know how that. I don't know where that whole conversation came from, but it was a request that was made of me. I don't have an opinion either way, um, other than the fact that I'll publicize it um, very well as, as I posted ordinance, uh, post agendas for that location. But I don't Will know. Have any conflicts with this? I have. I've, yet, I've maybe had one conflict with this with the school. I wouldn't have an issue with an occasional conflict. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> but I think Simone makes a good point. Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, even with conflict, the historical society, I mean, like the EDC committee, we're not that big. And when there's a meeting in here, I mean, even if there isn't a meeting in here, we meet in the, in the mm -hmm. conference room. That's where we've met in the past with those conflict, is we yeah. put the EDC in that, yeah. in the conference yeah, room. That so. room was big enough. Without well, having a good reason, I'm, I'm at to stay in the room. Okay. Phil started a motion yeah. now, so. I didn't hear a second. I'll second it so we can discuss it and vote on it. Yes, they yeah. Say. We've had some discussion already. <laughs> yeah, I think that, that I, I mean, I, I agree with Simone in that, I mean, I can see where where they, they might feel, perhaps they'd feel more comfortable discussing their issues somewhere else, but, uh, and once in a while they probably do run into a conflict. But um, these are the public places that the townspeople expect us to hold our meetings. So I would be... I will say I've been, it's probably been six or seven meetings that I've been with the EDC. I've never seen public. Never. <laughs> but I still, I don't understand the reasoning behind it. It's not like we're crowded in that room and have had to move to this room where there's been a conflict where there's something in here that we needed this room and couldn't be in that room. Well, why don't we do this? I mean, if they've got a, a concern or a reason for doing it, why don't they let us know what it is? Exactly. Yeah. Come on back and let us know what the reason is. Maybe there's legitimate reasons. Have they with seen this, the, uh, our policy? They are aware of the policy, and I told them that I had to bring it to the board to get approval. Okay. I, mean, you know, I like the neutral ground with meetings because you don't feel persuaded not that I would, but I mean, okay, we're at Weirs, and if um, let's just say a discussion comes up that involves Linda, I mean, I don't want people to feel like they're coerced into voting one way or the other because we're at their facility. You know? Completely understandable. Okay. Um, I suppose of the motion, or do you want to? Yeah, we'd have to do that, um, unless you want to withdraw it at this time and then to. Provide us with if, the rationale. If, if we're going to ask them to come to our meeting mm -hmm. and explain to us why they want to do it, yep. uh, if that's going to happen, I will withdraw my motion. Okay. And I'll withdraw my second. All right. Okay. I will do that. Sign mm -hmm. uh, with an update on our. Dying and disease tree issues at the town hall. As long as the board gives it their blessing, I did speak with Claudette Dave Sautel. She's a for the forest ranger in Alfred, uh, lives in Orlando. She looked at the trees with me. She said she, rather than, <laughs> rather than cut the trees down to figure out if they're diseased, uh, she gave a, a visual assessment of the trees and said that yes, they are either diseased or beyond their lifespan. Um, when they've gotten to the point where they at, they're at, 
only the very ends have any green um, life left to them. The branches break instead of bending. She went through a whole list of, you know, this is why these trees are in bad shape. Uh, she said it's more than likely that any kind of chemical or pesticide treatment isn't going to help to bring those trees back. And she agreed with the assessment that they need to come down. <coughs> I don't think it will be tomorrow, but as soon as Roger gets that shipper back, I think he'll be at, at, at it and taking them down. And Eleanor said that the one at the town hall that was put there in honor of her mother, um, she leaves it to our discretion to, she has no problem taking it down, and she leaves it to our discretion as to when and where to replace it. So, I mean, we had even discussed, and I was talking to Eleanor the other day, when we get a new town hall, perhaps having a memorial garden so that you might have a shrub rather than have a plaque on a tree, perhaps have something that's in the ground, a little plaque with a shrub or a small tree. But I don't think that's the only one we have, is it? Is that the only No, that's the third part is nothing is really documented yeah. in that. So other than by hearsay that's you know I thought something was done for Louis too. Louis Gertrude. He's got a road hanging out there, though. Yeah. <laughs> 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 it was for a dump road. Really the dump, yeah. Mm -hmm. Maybe not. Maybe it was just that one that, that Eleanor had put there for her mother. What, what was the plan for the uh, Christmas tree? Uh, we're going to Phil said he might have a tree that we could have donated um, until the tree that we planted three years ago was tall enough. To, to light for the ceremony, um, we'll more than likely put a ring into the ground and put a tree in um, a temporary Christmas tree that can be cut down, lit, and then taken down at the end of the season. We've got out on my back land. We've got plenty of Christmas trees. You could pick the size you want. The bigger you pick, the hotter it is. The more <laughs> we, we have one in town. Yes. Yeah. On Brandon Street that we're going to be cutting someday. Oh, right there on uh, yeah. the Yeah, we're doing a job. Yeah. And my guys wanted to cut it, and I said, no, it's too pretty. We're going to leave that as long as we can. <coughs> yeah. I don't know if that, that wouldn't be transplantable. It's, it's as big or bigger than this one. might not be as tall, but it's bigger around. It's much healthier, too. Yeah, it's, it's very healthy. Yeah. yeah, you probably would never transplant that. No way. But you could, if you had one year without a tree for a lighting ceremony, you could cut it and crane it, <coughs> stand it up like they do in Portland, yeah. you'd get that one year out of it, mm -hmm. and I don't know what it would cost for a crane. I know a couple. I know where you could get a low bed that would drag it over here, <laughs> but uh, there's no crane in that yet. Really we just put the log, we put the little bit right, right there, and we just fall our way on it, just strap it in place. Let's go. Yeah. I'm pretty good at falling trees exactly where I want. So I guess I won't really ask for a motion unless there's a motion to leave the dead trees there. Uh, but just to inform you, uh, it was in the arrow, no public outcry. That will come the day after the trees are cut down. <coughs> what is it worth <coughs> writing a small piece on the... On I apologize, I don't remember the woman's name that the tree is. Alice Leach. Alice Leach. Alice she was Leach. town clerk for years and years and years. Would it be worth throwing something in the post just saying, recognizing the fact that we've you know, taken her memorial tree and we're going to plan on replacing it? I'd recommend the co-star. Co-star. <laughs> <laughs> There's nobody here from the post. So she's always here. <laughs> Jen, when you have some time, you stop by town hall and we can talk about that. <laughs> Alice Leach was town clerk for I don't know how many years. I mean, that was before pre-town hall. Her town, uh, she did everything out of her, her front porch of the house where her daughter Eleanor lives now. And you could go there at, you know, 6 or 7 o'clock at night or at 7 o'clock in the morning and just go up and ring the bell and she'd come out and whatever you needed for a license or... Pretty sure that's why Sim put that new portrait on the front of her house. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I have. 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 I have
license, get any license, marriage license, went up and knocked on the door or rang the bell and... Yeah. Hmm. She was okay. Yeah. She was there. Yeah. Where was the house? Where did she live? Uh, when you go down River Road. Yeah. You cross, cross the bridge and I think it's the first or second house on the left. It's the second. The first second. house is that little ranch. Yeah, I think it's and the then second. And then right as you're on the corner, there's a two-story right there with the, with the big closed-in porch, <coughs> and that porch was her office. Really? Yeah. Yeah. I went there many times on Sunday or yeah. Saturday yeah. afternoon. Yeah. Yeah. Mrs. Leach, could you help me out, please? <laughs> Come right in. Come right in. Yeah. Wow. Then she used to say, young man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay. You want to sign the payroll and payable warrants. So moved. Second. All in favor. Okay. Is there any other business that we anticipate? Not for me, sir. Anybody else? In that case, we're going to entertain a motion to go into executive session to discuss a Personnel matter pursuant to 1MR S456A. So moved. Second. All in favor.